billions of Sally Murphy for like 10 minutes. Um, That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so but, so, so you, were, you were also recently at Sundance? You were yeah. On a, you were on a film at Sundance? Well, no. So Fun Home was incubated at the Sundance Theater Lab. A bunch Sundance, of so not Sundance Film Festival, Sundance Theater Lab. I was Lab. at the film festival. Okay, because you were at the Theater Lab. Uh, they were doing a benefit for, for the organization, and mm-hmm. they invited us to go out there and perform some songs. So... Bougie. It was very awesome. <laughs> who, who, did you see, who did you see at the Sundance? Who did uh, you rub elbows with? <laughs> Michael Service and I were doing uh, Snow Angels in the snow, and I noticed that Alec Baldwin walked by. And I clocked it, and I said, oh, that's Alec Baldwin. And then Michael was like, oh, Alec. So I met Alec Baldwin. Because he just, just knows all the people. Which was, yeah, of course, uh, which was really cool. And What color was then, his hair at that point? It changes monthly. I don't remember. I think I was too starstruck. I was like, Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. Um, but then we were, like, walking down this snowy mountain hill because you have to, like, the hotel is, like, weird. It's, like, basically you ski out of your hotel. It was weird. Anyway, so we were walking down this snowy mountain hill, and you're really not supposed to walk down the roads, and, like, a black Escalade rolls up and rolls down the window, and it's Alec Baldwin, and he goes, do you guys need a ride? <laughs> it was so funny. <laughs> do you guys need a ride or like, something? Uh, no, Bro- thank you. Broadway salaries, they can't even get rides. You could have ridden with Alec Baldwin. I could have. I don't That's, know why I didn't. That would be, like, your biggest regret probably now. Um, well, we were, like, already at the hotel. Mm-hmm. So, oh, okay, so I was like, wasn't necessary. Right. Um, but, so, next question. I, di- I divert. I digress. I digress. I guess I digress. When you're not in Fun Home or at, you know, doing something at the theater, what, do yeah. you, what are some hobbies that you have that you, you know, used to soak up your time? Well, as I mentioned before, I'm a pretty sick bowler. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you just need to throw a ball and destroy some pins and get it out. That is, that is some that good... Is- you know, therapy right there. It's it's incredible therapy. I feel that way about golf. I feel like Do you? I feel well. I don't actually play golf, but I feel like that's why. <laughs> I I feel like that's that's why golf is popular. You know, you yeah. Just take your aggression out of that little ball. That's and true. Hit it that's into true. The green. That's true. But I'm also a writer, mm-hmm. and I'm, I also like to paint, uh, and I like to make quilts out of old quilts? things. So what do you like make? What do you make quilts out of? I'm working on one that's my dad and I's old jeans. Yeah. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> father daughter father daughter quilt <laughs> made out of old Levi's. <laughs> my dad, uh, my dad loves to work on the house, much like Bruce in M- Fun Home. Bruce Bechtel in Fun um, Home. Um, although my dad is not gay. So far. As far as we as know. As far as we know. He's gonna watch this and like run down uh, the streets, going, "I, I'm not. Yeah. I'm not. I swear." But so you'd be surprised how many people come to the show and they say, "My family was not like that at all." But it was like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's one of those shows that's so universal. Like, even if your dad wasn't gay, you have yeah. some kind of connection to it. Absolutely. It's the, really cool. I mean, the emotions are still so, they yeah. resonate so deeply with a lot of people. They resonated with me. That wasn't my home at all, but the, right. everything that the uh, character of Allison was going through, I went through. I think, like, the struggle of, like, learning to be you fully and, like, have no shame is real for everyone. That's why. Unless I... you're a psychopath. <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's, it's, been, it's, been, it's, been, it's been very difficult for me as a psychopath. I'm sure. Um, I'm but sure. That, but I remember when I watched it, when I saw Fun Home, uh, Sydney Lucas, the, the Sydney <gasps> Lucas, who's like what a Mat- Matilda, Fun Home. Yeah. <laughs> she yeah, um when she did amazing. when she did Ring of Keys that song and also her performance of that song that was that was something that I very much connected to mm. just finding someone in the world who felt like what you want it to be yeah. and just really kind of being transfixed by it and yeah yeah and having it just kind of be a pivot point in your life yeah i just love the the writing of it the the how she can't really enunciate what she's feeling a lot during mm. the verses i love yeah. that and the re- the repeating of the chorus which is just what she keeps coming back to because that's what's catching her eye that's what it's, i part of that's part of what it, sorry i was, I was, I was saying it's very smart writing it's just very very good musical yeah. theater writing that's part of what i love about janine and lisa's work is that the character of allison she she does get caught up she doesn't get caught up in the emotion of things she's constantly trying to figure it out logically like, this is what I'm feeling, and so I need to figure out why and how, and so the lyrics are constantly working towards figuring something out, which makes the song so active. Absolutely. It's like an actor's dream to do mm-hmm. their stuff. What I also love about those songs, a lot, a lot of the songs in Fun Home, 
is they don't attack the issue head on in the opening lyrics. So mm. many songs, and this is actually something that I said in my drunk tirade to Lauren Ward about the song My House from Matilda. Uh. It's a situation where uh, so many songs these days, it's very much, and I'm sad, and I'm sad, and I'm going to keep on yelling at you why I'm sad. Um, or it's just like uh, word vomit about my left shoe, which is actually a symbol for the fact that my parents are divorced. Like, right. That, like, which it's always like a weird non sequitur, but... Um, Things like Changing My Major, Days and Days, Ring of Keys, My House of Matilda. It takes, it, they find what the issue is and then they don't really a- address it quite just yet. They kind of walk around it and then as the song progresses, it becomes a little more head on, which gives you a wonderful uh, action to go with. Yeah, absolutely. They're, the characters are trying to figure out what they're feeling and so, so, and they're actively doing that while the song is happening. Yeah. And just like human beings, you know, one verse is very articulate. The next verse, maybe not so much. Because, right. you know, at one point it's like, yes, I'm on a roll. I'm on a roll. Crap, I forgot what I that roll wall. was. Yeah, I hit a wall. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's so, so wonderful. Isn't it so exciting to be in a, like a world where that is, that is musical theater right now? Like, yeah. It just seems so, it's it's like an actor's dream, the stuff that's coming out Absolutely. right now. Absolutely. And I, but I think that uh, some of like the best musical theater writing, even from like the 40s, I mean, some of them have that, like the If I Loved You bench scene in Carousel, that's literally all just not addressing the subject. Right, It's, right. you know, I I very much am in love with you right now, but I'm too stubborn and, uh, or, and, and uh, shy to tell you. Or people will say we're, we're in love in, from Oklahoma. Oh, I forgot about Oklahoma. See, we can't do favorites. Of course we can do favorites. Carousel, that's my favorite. Done. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. 